the armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. The armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. We thank you, Lord, that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, demolishing principalities and powers, casting down imaginations, breaking off every dark thing. We thank you, Lord, that you release angelic hosts on our behalf. We thank you, Father, that as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as we walk through dark places that are inevitable in order to bring us to our freedom, you are with us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You protect us, you gird us up. Your blood covers us, your love sustains us. We thank you, Lord, for the truth that delivers us out of darkness, out of deceptions, and out of delusions. We surrender to our champion, the Lord of hosts, the leader of the armies of heaven, Lord Jesus Christ, we will follow you. We will follow you through those places. We will follow your lead, Holy Spirit. We will take up your weaponry, your tools, your instruments.
we will follow your commands and listen to your instructions. We acknowledge and confess that we cannot go unless you go before us, with us, and in us, and you are. And for that, we are eternally grateful and give you praise and give you glory and honor and exaltation and reverence. We surrender by grace. We acknowledge that the dark places that we traverse are not only outside of us, but they are inside of us. We yield to the journey of our soul to partner with the Holy Spirit and become one with you, the lover of our soul. We know that we cannot war. We have no power, no authority without you. But with you, all things are possible. You have taken us to the edge of the land. Once imprisoned for generations in bondage, you had to walk us through, Lord, the generations of bondage and iniquities, traumas and sin, transgressions and deceptions and blindness. We had to, we had to walk through the wilderness years, Lord, so that we could cry out, so that we could come to the end of ourselves, so that we could finally desire to see over the edge of the wilderness into the promised land to desire something greater, something freer, something more liberating, more promising, more fruitful, more holy, more sanctified, more beautiful, more loving. Thank you. And we have cried out to you, O oh God, in all kinds of unconventional ways. And also through intercessions and prayers. Thank you for the gift of prayer. Even in this, cause our eyes to see, O oh God, the gift of prayer. what it really is. It's supernatural. For you are God and you can do all things. But your universal law calls us into prayer. because of what prayer does to us and for us. You draw us into your heart. You draw us out of darkness. You draw us into truth. You bring us into your authority. We bow low so that you may raise us up in you. We forsake what is false, what is of this world, that we may take up a holy exchange in you. You humble us 
so that you may exalt us in you. In the wilderness of bondage, we were in prison and we didn't know it. But you've caused us to see it. And now you bring us into a land of warfare. And you are training our hands for war and you are readying us for warfare. That we might take the land, forsaking the old, pressing on towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ. Prison was not a land of freedom. Warfare is not freedom, but brings us to a place of liberation and rest. After being disciplined and trained under your hand. To learn obedience through your spirit. And we say yes to you. For you are tearing down Jezebel's altars, demolishing our Asherah poles, burning up her evil delicacies and wicked idols. exposing our seductions and twisted plans, her crooked ways, her perverseness that has led us into bondage and generations of iniquities. We will not turn a blind eye to what you are exposing let us be quick to respond to the Holy Spirit, to the inner voice, to that faithful guide as wisdom calls out to us to guide us into all truth. We will not deny as you smash the strongholds of denial and delusions and call us into your truth. For you are truth, Lord Jesus Christ. You are truth. You are the way. You are the everlasting life. And you are calling us into life by the way of truth which cannot be held back by denial and delusion. We release you, we release our will that you may do what you please to cause us to no longer be encumbered in chains of bondage. in realms of hell where there is gnashing of teeth and screams of torment. We release our will to you that you may free us. We render our hearts. We allow you to shine your pulsating, 
illuminating radiant light of truth upon our hearts. We come close to the fire, the refiner's fire, the altar, where we make these exchanges with you, O oh God. that you may expedite your plans. We say to you, have your way. Cause the circumstances in our lives to unfold in such a way in the realms and the laws of the spirit so that we may not go our own way any longer, so that we may not deny any longer, so that we may not project and manipulate any longer. We relinquish control to you. Keep us from ourselves, oh God. We acknowledge and realize that this can only happen, this prayer, as we walk in repentance, close to your heart, in oneness. In connection to you, in continual fellowship with your Holy Spirit. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would cause us to walk this way with you, that we would not get away in separation. Again, in separation, our soul from your spirit, so that there is not that gap of darkness, delusion, and separatedness, where we go into deceptions because we can't see. We can't see in the dark. We ask you to keep us close to you. Do whatever you have to do, God, to keep us close like that. So that we may not detour any longer back into the iniquities of old. Because this is the hour of deliverance. Thank you that the ark of your presence lives inside of us evermore. And where your presence is, we cannot stay in darkness. Thank you that the call of the spirit has gone out to throw down Jezebel and to trample upon her eggs, her offspring of wickedness, her landmines that have been danced around and tiptoed around. And thank you that you are exposing them by the power of your arm, by the voice that is from heaven. One word declared out of your mouth will consume, will consume her. Thank you that you are purifying the feminine, that you are purifying your bride. Thank you that you are purifying the feminine energy, both in men and women, showing us the truth. Cutting off iniquities. We will no longer be victims 
of her stranglehold. Vessels of her wickedness. We look towards the promised land of liberation and freedom in your spirit, in your heart, in your kingdom. Cause us to obey your voice as you lead us into the land, O oh God, and into the battles that are set before us. May we step with you. We put our trust in the armor of God and in your weapons of war. These are not the weapons of this world. These are not weapons that we used in the wilderness. For those are weapons of darkness. We realize, God, that there are many in intercessions and prayers right now calling out to you in the same way that you are strengthening your people. You are strengthening your armies right now. And you are calling us higher. Break our contracts with Jezebel. Break our soul contracts with Jezebel. We agree with your heart and mind in this. As you call us into the mind of Christ, as you call us into purity, as you call us into righteousness, as you call us into holiness, as you call us into your power, as that power is laid down and consumed. We give ourselves to you. We thank you that there is a great cloud of witnesses roaring the spirit realm, adding to our prayers, and that Jesus Christ is interceding at the right hand of the Father, making intercession according to your will. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you're working in manifold ways and wisdom and power to flesh out that which you desire. That it may manifest here on earth as it is in heaven. And so we agree with all others praying these prayers and the hosts of heaven and the witnesses the roars around the throne that call forth your will in this hour. We posture ourselves and prepare for war that you may take us into a land of liberation and rest and peace and comfort in the kingdom where you are ever exalted and glorified on the throne. And we are filled with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Father, those that you have called to do radical things, to stand radically, when we look at Jesus Christ, 
so misunderstood. Those you call to walk in truth will do radical things. They will answer the call. They will not have the approval of man and they will not look to the approval of man. But they will walk in the fear of the Lord and they will be delivered of the fear of man, the approval of man. They will let go of the false image in the ego and live in the identity of Christ grounded and established in true love. And they will manifest heaven here on earth. And they will do radical things, God. Let us be of those who do the radical, who respond quickly who walk in the fear of the Lord and lay down the approval of man. Let us be of those whose trust is built on the rock, the foundation of Christ alone. Whose foundations can never fail. When all that is shaken is shaken, they will stand, they will endure and they will prevail because of that foundation grounded in truth, grounded in the kingdom, forsaken by man, misunderstood by man. We want to do radical things. We want to walk in your spirit and authority, radically God. Purify our hearts that we may let go of all that is based in our ego to seek man's approval man's glory, man's acceptance, that we may walk with you radically. That our faith may be solid, our trust secure, immovable, impenetrable, that our walk alone may emanate power from on high in unseen places and that that will manifest here on the earth through everything it touches. We put our faith in that. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. We put our faith in that which is unseen because it is more real than what we do see here. This false illusion, the places of wilderness, which we've ventured for too long and put our faith in for too long, that which is seen we lay down for that which is unseen, for great faith that pleases you. We glory in the name that is higher than any other name 
We thank you for your Holy Spirit, which never leaves us and is available in ever increasing measure, our greatest and best friend, source, guide, wisdom, revelation, power, comforter, counselor, God with us. We delight ourselves in you. And in this, we lack nothing. We are more than satisfied, delighted in holy pleasure, oneness. We feast on the delicacies of your kingdom. continually being renewed. We thank you for what you will do, what you are doing and what you have done. For your perpetual life, cannot be contained. It must continue to redeem all things back to you, back to true love, back to life evermore. We rest in your heart. We wait upon you. stay with you because you never leave us and you never forsake us.